And so we're in the second week of our Give Thanks series. We're doing Give Thanks uh, this week and next week as well. And so last week we talked about some of the benefits of giving thanks and that God actually created us to be thankful, grateful people. That is kind of what our DNA is. And it shows that the more thankful and grateful we are, the healthier we are. And in fact, we can even live longer and all that fun stuff. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, you weren't here for last week, you can go online and check that out. So I'm not going to rehash uh, that sermon. But um, we have the, the verse that kind of, for the whole series, Psalms 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And man, that is so easy when things are going well. You know, when God is answering all those prayers, and, and even like those simple prayers, right? Like uh, a few weeks back, uh, Haley was home, and Alyssa was uh, in a play, and so we were going to go watch this play, and Haley lost her phone. Now, you know, that's not a huge thing when it comes to the universe, but individually losing your phone is like, I don't know, honestly, I don't know which I would want to lose more, my wallet with credit cards or my phone. I think my wallet. I think I would rather have my phone, right, because I can cancel the credit cards and all that, but the information and everything that's on the phone, I don't even want, I hate when... I hate buying a new phone and transferring stuff. I mean, let alone having to dig it all up and all that. But so, you know, we're looking for it. We can't find it. It's nowhere to be found. We're, we're asking people. And then we, we say a prayer, right? We're all like, God, help us find this phone. And lo and behold, afterwards, we find the phone. We're like, oh, thank you. That's awesome. Way to go, God. You, you help us with the little things, right? And uh, I've shared before where Amy and I, you know, come tax season, we're like, oh, I wonder how much we're going to get back in taxes because we knew that was going to be whatever big ticket item bill was going to be coming up, right? It just seemed to always work that way, and we just, and it would, and we'd be like, God, thank you for providing for us. And so when it's going easy and all that, man, it's super easy, right? Because give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He cares about the little things. He cares about just, you know, all that fun stuff. But I want to talk about a, a passage of scripture that isn't normally thought of during the good things. In fact, this is the psalm that you'll often hear read at funerals. Now, I've got the NIV version. For some of you, as I read through this, you're going to be saying that's wrong because you memorized the King James Version. Okay, so I'll try to adjust as we go. But I just want to go through this passage of scripture and see about thanking God even when things aren't going so well. All right, so let's just kind of walk through this together. So the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Now, I want to pause here because if you're a King James person or you memorized it in the King James or you've heard it on a movie or something, it would say more, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I grew up in the church, a pastor's kid, Heard this a gazillion times. But, you know, when you're a kid, you hear things, and you're hearing the words, but how you're translating them means something totally different. You know, like, I, I, I knew the Ten Commandments, and they were all, thou shalt not, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not, all these shall not, shall not, shall not, Right? Now, when, when I heard, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I'm like, that made no sense to me as a kid. Why do I not want Jesus as my shepherd? Right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him. I'm not, so I was all confused uh, for a while until I finally figured out. And so the, the NIV kind of helps it explain a little bit better. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Man, this is the image of God when things are going well. Now, re remember, this is David, a shepherd, is writing the psalm about a shepherd and sheep, right? And so if you don't know anything about sheep, one thing you need to know about sheep is they're stupid. All right? That, that's pretty much, they're, they're just, uh, and so there were times when uh, shepherds would have to make sure they get them into the right food to eat and not wander off into stuff that's not going to be good for them and all that. Uh, 
get by quiet waters. Now, I don't know how true this is, but I will say I've heard it talked about how if it was a real flowing stream, the sheep would, especially if they were full wool, wouldn't have the best balance. And a bunch of wool and a bunch of water, not a good combination. And uh, so, you know, so it's better for them instead of being swooped downstream and losing a sheep, uh, still water so that they could gently get in, get a drink and things like that. But basically, David's saying, look, God, you're my shepherd. I'm the sheep and you're taking care of me. You give me green pastures to lie down in and eat. You give me quiet waters to, to drink and I can be refreshed. You refresh me. You build me up. You encourage me. You give me what I need. I need water. I need food. I need rest. He guides me along the right path of his, for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, or even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, is the King James, I will fear no evil. You know, um, he, he's talking about, look, you guide me along. You're there with me. And even though I go through some dark times, I don't have to fear evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Have you ever been in a time where just having someone there is comforting? They, they don't have to say anything. They don't have to have words of wisdom. Just knowing that their presence was there is like a, okay, now, this one isn't like a hard, like, oh, this was a hard time. But I can remember as a, as a young preteen going hunting in Pennsylvania. You know, one, I thought, man, I am, I am all that. Look at me. I am 12 years old, and I have a high-powered rifle in my hands. And they're taking me walking through the woods at, in the dark of the morning, I'm like, this is cool, and I'm also, now, as I grow up, I'm like, what were they thinking, right? But I just remember walking, and, and I, I had been through the woods a lot, but I'd been through the woods during the daytime, and I remember walking into the woods, and when we were 12, our first deer hunt, we got to go with our grandpa, and I just remember walking in the woods thinking, man, I'm so glad my grandpa's here. Because I knew my grandpa could walk through these woods with his eyes closed. He knew the woods. It was a comfort. And then as I got older, and my dad and I used to hunt together, I remember again, just I would be in the woods in one place, and just the comfort I knew that somewhere dad was here with me. I couldn't see him. I couldn't hear him, but I knew he was here in the woods with me. And that, that really gave a peace and a comfort. And I know sometimes in rough times, just having someone there is a comfort, is a peace. And David is saying, look, I, I, no matter what I go through, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to dread. I, I, I don't have to fear, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, as a shepherd, you know, they would have uh, different tools. Uh, the staff was kind of more of the rescue hook. Hey, I'm getting you out of the trouble. The, the rod was more of a, hey, I'm going to give you a little love tap to tell you to get away from there to keep you out of trouble, right? And so he's just saying, look, you comfort me. You help. You guide me along. You make sure that I'm going in the direction I need to go, and I know you're there. Even when I get maybe a little disciplined, I know you're there. When I get rescued, I know you're there but there's peace in knowing that you're there. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even though there is chaos around, even though I know that there is trouble around, God, you stop and you say, hey, let me prepare this banquet. Let me prepare this meal for you. Let's pause. Let's have this time where I can nourish you and I can take care of you. And you know, again, that I'm there. Even though this is going on, it, it's a, this picture of, of this, hey, there's chaos all around you. But you know what? Eh, pause. I've got that covered. In fact, I've got it covered so much. How about you have a nice meal? 
Have you ever been so flustered about something, so worried about something that you just couldn't eat that, you, you know, I, I've done that where I'm, I'm worried about something and it's, it's time to eat and I, you know, I'll go and I'll open up the fridge, I'll open up the cabinets and I'm like, I just, I don't, I don't, no, I can't eat, I just can't, I can't, because all this is going on around me. And he's saying, look, in the presence of my enemies, you calm me. And you say, look, I've got this. I've got this so much that I, I prepared this banquet. You anoint my head with oil. This was a, a sign of blessing, a sign of being chosen, of being picked. I don't know if any of you have ever been in the situation, the horrible situation where they're choosing teams for some kind of activity, and everyone's lined up, and you're like, oh, great. Here we go. Let's see. Will I be last or next to last this time, right? You know, and like if it was my older brother picking teams, I'm like, no hope, right? Um, but there's something about being picked. There's something about being wanted. Like, no, I choose you. And, and David's saying, look, you anoint my head with oil. You choose me. You pick me. You want me to be part of your family. It's not that you got me through default. I wasn't the last player there, and it was your turn to pick. And so by default, I'm on your team. No, you chose me. You picked me. You blessed me. And my cup overflows with your blessing and with your love and with your grace. <clears throat> Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Surely all these blessings, all this wonderful stuff, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. When, when I can look back and see how you worked in my life, I can see your goodness. I can see your love. I, I'm going to be constantly engulfed in that. I'm constantly going to be surrounded by that. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, most of that is nice, positive, like good things are happening. But I want to pause because oftentimes we as a church, we as Christians... We can talk about being thankful, and we can talk about being um, grateful, and we can talk about, quite frankly, we can talk about how God's going to take care of all of our needs, and God's going to do this, and God's going to do that, and it's going to be wonderful, it's going to be rosy, it's going to be grand, and if you become a Christian, oh, God's there to meet all your needs, and then a time comes when God doesn't seem to meet your need, and you go, what in the world just happened? Where are you, God? I'm going through this hard, hard time in my life. Where are you now? And we can go through, and as a church, we're saying, well, God, God's there. Oh, yeah, God will meet your needs. And, and we talk about all the, and, and, but in this time of hurt, in this time of agony, and we feel like God is not answering my prayers. I'm praying, I'm begging, I'm pleading, and God isn't answering this prayer. Where is he then? How am I supposed to be thankful then? How am I supposed to be grateful when the God who can accomplish anything isn't answering this one little minute need that I have in my life? It's huge to me, but God, I know it's so small and easy for you to take care of. Why aren't you taking care of this for me? And I don't want to dive into why, why do bad things happen to good people and great things happen to bad people and all that today. That's a whole other sermon. But I do want to talk about how do we actually keep a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude towards God during those tough times? Because if you read your Bible, Jesus never promises, follow me and life will be great. In fact, Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, pick up your cross. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. I mean, he basically is, is doing anti-sales, right? Oh, you want to follow me? Let me tell you how bad it might get for you. You know what? People are going to persecute you and hate you for my name's sake. So where do we go with this? When we're saying, look, God has designed us to be grateful and thankful, and we're to give thanks in all things and all this wonderful stuff, how does that work, and what, what do we do with these hard times? I want to step back to this part of the passage of Scripture. 
And this, for me, this time reading through and studying this, this just jumped out so vividly more than I've ever seen it before. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, or even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I've always separated those, and I've never put them together. He guides me along the right paths. And you know where those right paths take me? Through the darkest valley. I've never caught that before. I've always pictured it he guides me along the right path for his namesake. Oh, flowers, butterflies, sun. And then somewhere, somehow, I don't know how I got here, uh, valley of the shadow of death. Ooh, scary. I, I don't know how this happened. But no, he guides us along the path. And you know what? As we're traveling through life, you know what? That path is going to take us from time to time into the darkest valley. He's guiding us through and sometimes into dark valleys. I, when, when I put those two together, I'll tell you, I, I, I was like, oh, wait, what? What, what, am I, what, what, am, what am I reading here? Wait, God, you're, you're guiding me along, and now I'm in the valley. It's, it doesn't say he guides me along, and then when I go off on my own way, I end up in these dark valleys. No, he guides me along, and even though I walk through the dark, darkest valleys, I will fear no evil. Why? Because Jesus is with us. Now, I'm not saying that God makes bad things happen to us, but God did, does understand, look, in this world, you're going to have trouble. And I will guide you through that. I be, will be there with you through these times. You are not alone. You can still trust me. I am still here. My rod and my staff is still part of this journey. I am still guiding you. I am still bringing you through. I am still saying, follow me. I am still directing you. It's great when someone is there with you during a tough time. You know what sometimes can be even better? Is if you can talk to somebody who's experienced what you've experienced. And you want to know what's amazing? And it hit me really hard during my study here. Jesus has been through what we've been through. If you prayed a prayer and you begged and you pleaded and you cried out to God, please, this is my desire, this is my wish, and you didn't feel like God was pulling through and answering the prayer how you wanted to pray, Jesus has been there. Jesus relates. Jesus can look at you and go, I know exactly how you feel. I've done that too. I've prayed, God, God, if there's any other way Take this cup from me. On the night that he was betrayed, he was praying so hard, he was sweating blood. He was pleading with his father, God, this is going to be horrible. God, if there's any other way, take this away. I really would rather something else happen here. This is, this is hard. And yet Jesus still ends up being crucified. Jesus still ends up dying. So when we say Jesus is with us, even through these hard times, not only is he there, but he knows what we're going through. He can relate. He can understand. He knows how hurtful. He knows the questions. He knows everything. He's even been through death. And Jesus can still come alongside and say, I'm here with you. 
I might not be able to give you the answer that's going to comfort you right now, but I can say, I'm here. I'm here. Trust me. Trust God. Follow me. Because it isn't, it isn't just about the here and now with God. He's, he's focused on your eternity as well. And he might not answer it the way you want to answer it. You might be going through some painful, painful time. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't care. It doesn't mean that God has gone away. It doesn't mean God has turned his back. It means God's heart is breaking with yours. And he's walking with you through that time. God doesn't even promise that, hey, I'm going to fix everything on the other side. He just says, I'll still be there. And I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to care for you. I'm still going to pour my grace upon you and my mercy. And yeah, I'll be there with comfort as well. So as I was reading this, how do we give thanks? How can we be grateful during these hard times? It's not that we're grateful, and, and I've heard people say this, and every time I'm just like, mm, something in me just kind of recoils of, well, you know, God did this for a reason. Now, your theology may be a little bit different than mine, but I don't believe God causes everything that happens here on earth. God can use different things. But I think sometimes there are experiences we go through that God sometimes simply goes, I'm sorry that this has happened to you. I love you. I hurt with you. We'll get through this. He doesn't promise to fix everything. But what we need to focus on is that, oh my goodness, the creator of all cares so much about me that he is willing to walk with me through this time. He hasn't turned his back. He still loves me. He still cares for me. He gets me. He relates. The God that we're wishing would take away all the pain and all the agony, we need to remember is also the God who watched his son die for us. He's, he's the God who's done so much. He's given us grace and forgiveness that we don't deserve. He's looked down and said, look, you're not perfect. You don't deserve my forgiveness. But I'm offering it freely anyway. You can't earn it. You can't become good enough. But I freely give it to you. And I will be here. And I will love you. And in response, sometimes we just have to say, God, I... I question. I don't get it. But God, one thing I do understand is how much you've done for me, and I thank you for that. I thank you for the blessing of your forgiveness. I thank you for the blessing of my salvation. I thank you that I can spend eternity with you, and I thank you so much that you're here with me through this. And all I can simply say is, God, I will still praise you. I will still praise you because of who you are and because you love me as much as you do. So I'm sorry it's not a hoo-hoo feel-good message today. But I hope, I hope that if you're struggling with this or when you come to a point where you will struggle with this, 
that you'll be able to just take a step and say, okay, okay, this is no fun. This hurts. And I don't get it all. But you know what? I still, I know God still loves me. I know God still cares for me. I know God still forgives me and he, he's done so much more for me than I deserve. And so I can still be thankful and he is here. My Heavenly Father is here with me through it all. He's not making me go alone. Hopefully we can take those steps. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But I think we can be thankful even through hard times. We can be thankful through our tears of sorrow, through our tears of pain, knowing that he is there. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, God, thank you for being here. God, even though sometimes we may feel like you're not anywhere else, even though we, we feel like we can't see you, we can't hear from you, we can't feel you, God, you're still here. You still love us. You still care for us. God, help us to cling to that during those times. God, help us to know that not only are you here, but you're crying with us. That your, your heart is breaking as well. That you love us. And you'll never leave us or forsake us. God, help us to remember just how great your love is for us. And help us to just, just remember all that you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen.